that's interesting. The Stig didn't spin that car once on that lap. Anyway, it's time now for the news. Uh, you might notice we've got some new furniture uh, and a new telly. <laughs> now, the problem is, you see, there was a fire at our storage depot. You might have seen it in the papers. Mm. And nearly all of our props got destroyed. Yeah, and the, uh, the police are saying, as you can see here, that it was arson. Yeah, but, I mean, who'd do that? It's not like we've ever upset anyone. I know. <laughs> Well, there was the vicar whose tree I rammed in the Toyota pickup truck. Yeah, and everyone in Wales, and everyone in Birmingham, and everyone in America. Yeah. And while we were making this series, actually, we managed to upset the Coast Guard, who said that we've ruined the English Channel. Yeah. Hang on. A so, minute. what? You're not seriously suggesting that the British Coast Guard drove all the way up to Watford and set fire to our chairs, are it you? Would be no, better. I'm not. I know who did this. Who? Oh. Fifth gear. <laughs> Can we just look at the evidence? Just last week, OK, it was in the papers, they've rolled a Bedford Rascal van. There it is, OK? Yeah. A year ago, if we look at a, a shot from Top Gear, we yeah. rolled a Bedford <laughs> Rascal van. Where did it They're now saying that one of their presenters has hurt his foot. That's not an accident! <laughs> we have proper accidents on this show. Do you think they're a bit jealous? Though? Yeah, it... so please, really. Tiff, Vicky, stop burning our things. Yes. <laughs> Can I just say, the seats we used to have uh, were from a Vauxhall Senator. So if anybody out there is watching, they have a Vauxhall Senator. Well, hang on, you're going to say if you've got a Vauxhall Senator and you don't need the seats. <laughs> Send them to exactly. us. Uh, write to us, it's, I've got a Vauxhall Senator and I drive everywhere standing up. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, BBC, Television London, uh, wherever we are. It's Wood Lane. Shot. I love the way that James has gone into that chair as though he belongs. <laughs> It actually looks like you get one of these with one of these. <laughs> <laughs> they just ship them together as a pair. It's exactly the same as my furniture at home. I was very familiar with it. Shall we move on? Yes, and um, there's lots of supercars around at the moment, new stuff, so I thought we could maybe take a quick look at some of those. Mm -hmm. Here's that Roush for GT, and they've turned the supercharger up on that, so it's now, what, 610 instead of 550 horsepower. Uh, it's going to be £141,000. They're only making 10 of those. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's as fast as it'll ever go. That's it'll never um, go. <laughs> yeah. And there's this, the Lamborghini Reventon. They're only making 20 of these. Um, it is costly. £800,000 a piece. 800 grand. Yes, but look at it. It looks like a stealth fighter. It's all angles. It's beautiful. 800,000 quid? Yeah. This is the Bentley Brooklands. It's, uh, it's a two-door... Um, um, what's the other one called that they make? <laughs> <laughs> Continental Azure. No, no, Mike, we have been off for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Anage, it's a two door version of that. Uh, 530 horsepower, 230,000 pounds. Proper Bentley, though. Old mm. school. Proper good. comfortable. Good for your piles. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say as well, it's not all the supercars. There are uh, some affordable cars out as well. Uh, there's one. <laughs> OK, now... Um, uh, another quick look at a new car. Subaru Impreza STI, Hyper Nutter rally thing coming along. Haven't released many facts about it yet. Probably going to be 300 horsepower there or thereabouts, turbocharged engine. But we're pretty confident it's not going to be a looker. No. No, because, well, here's the photograph they sent out, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that really is. Honestly, that is... That's the photograph they sent out. We haven't faked that. No, it? we have not faked that. That's what they sent us. So, can you send us a picture of a new car? Um, um, yes, yes, here it is. Doesn't suggest confidence, does it? It's no. pig, we know it. Oh, now, listen, you know in the olden days when Britain was a sensible country, if you had a bump on the motorway, put your car on the hard shoulder, exchanged names and addresses of the other guys, and then you went on your way. Not anymore. Have you noticed this now? If you have a bump on the motorway now, you know those policemen who aren't really policemen? They come to the scene of the crash and close the motorway. Have you noticed? I was coming down the M40 on Wednesday, tiny crash, couple of broken indicator lenses, they got there and they had shut all three lanes. Huge queue, people missing meetings, people missing flights, just so that they could run around picking things up. It's just, I've never seen. And I got, do you know what? I got into the office, I thought, I'll just find out how many other motorways have been closed today. Around that, do you know what it was? I've got a list here. That, just on that one day, the M40, the M1, the M25, the M26, the M66 and the M42, all shut by these wombles. <laughs> we can manage without you, you day glow. <laughs> oh, that's... Wombles. That's touching, ladies and gentlemen, his first rant of the series. Yes. Yes. <laughs>
Have you got I've, more news? I have got more news. Bentley have recalled some cars. Um, there is a problem with their wheel nuts, apparently. <laughs> they might not be fastened properly. <laughs> <laughs> Bentley say it's not a big deal. <laughs> It's only one batch of nuts affected. It only affected, I've got it written down here, it only concerns the Arnage R and the Arnage T and the Arnage RL and the Azure. So basically, pretty much all of the cars they make. And it's only those built between February 05 and August last year. So that's, that's a year and a half. No, my favourite is the government, OK, who actually run this recall. They say here, if the bolts do become loose, this would in all probability be noticeable to the driver. Yes, it would. Yes, yes. there would be a considerable mechanical knocking noise. Oh, and a wheel gun. Oh, and sparks. <laughs> and sky road. Yeah. road, sky road ditch. Dear, I think there might be something wrong with the car. <laughs> I think they were jealous of Rolls-Royce, because they used to say the loudest thing in a Rolls-Royce at 100 miles an hour is the clock. Yeah. So now Bentley can say the loudest thing in a Bentley at 100 miles an hour is the front near side wheel falling <laughs> off. <laughs> um, <laughs> new highway codes come along and it says now that they advise you don't smoke while behind the wheel. Why? I mean, us three all smoke, OK? So nothing to be proud of. The fact is that we all do, and we don't crash. Well, two of us don't, so... <laughs> I actually love giving up smoking as well, mate. Well, there you are. You can't do two things at once. <laughs> I can multitask. You can multitask? Yeah. yeah I've seen you putting your makeup on. Yeah. And driving? And driving. Yeah. I've seen you multitask and driving. No, you can't talk about that on the television. <laughs> that <laughs> isn't in the highway. <laughs> Yeah, I well, so the people who wrote, wrote the highway code thing, you know, the ones who say, if yeah, you yeah. feel tired, pull off at the motorway services. Or pull off. <laughs> so, no, you weren't allowed to. Because you can't pull off driving. Pull off. Driving. Sorry, yeah. pull off. <laughs> so they say that, but on the other hand, they say you can't... <laughs> Just because they can't drive and smoke at the same time doesn't mean the rest of us are all smoking. That, that is ridiculous. No, it is a good point. My, Although it gives me an idea, because we've got our track here. Why don't we have, like, track days, but instead of getting caught up on how fast you go around and all of that, we just let people smoke while they're driving. Or, or put their makeup on. Or use their mobile phone. All of the stuff you want to do or while you... Or eat a pie. Yeah. Around and, our track. And speed. That is fantastic. Now, £100, you come, you've got, you're late for work, you think, oh, God, I'm going to make a call. I'll go around the uh, top of your test track. You can make the call, have a pie. And a slice of freedom. And you don't have to pull off in the services. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and the £100 that you pay us, we can spend on new seats. And that's the end of the news. And now the news. And I'm afraid we begin with an apology. We are unable to bring you Jeremy's road test of a Ferrari on the moon. Yeah, unfortunately, we, uh, we've had uh, a call from the Director General of the BBC. He said he had one or two issues with it. <laughs> I think it was the bit at the end when the Queen stormed off the moon. No, <laughs> actually, the Queen walked onto the moon. No, she didn't. She stormed off it. It wasn't faked in any way. We don't fake things. Oh, hey, now, uh, you know McLaren are working on a new supercar? Well, given what's happened in uh, Formula One this year, we've been able to speculate on what that will look like. Here it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> So that's a 413 Scuderia, isn't it? It is, right. yes. And that's a kind of a new version of the 430, and it's, it's a bit lighter than the standard car, a bit faster. Mm -hmm. It's got the flappy paddle gearbox on it, but it changes gear even faster, which is all great, but it costs £28,000 more than a standard 430. I know, and it brings us back to those lightweight supercars that we were reviewing last week, because yeah. what really annoys me is that you buy a Ferrari 430 and you think this is as good as Ferrari can make a car, and then a couple of minutes later they come along and go, no, actually, this is. But it's going to cost an extra £28,000. But if you give us, an, yeah, give us another £28,000, you'll have a car that's as good as we can actually make it. Exactly right. I think it's a bit like that Sainsbury's Taste the Difference cheese. <laughs> Think about it. Hold on a minute. No. Mm, no, it's no, not it like cheese. No, th that, that's not cheese. No. This is an analogy. But you go into Sainsbury's and you see cheese, and it costs a certain amount of money, but then next to it, there's taste the difference cheese, and it's a little bit more expensive, but it tastes really nice. He, the bachelor life. No, but what, <laughs> no, but what I want to know is, why don't they just make all the cheese like that? Or do they just make that cheese and then make some that's a bit worse, price it lower and say, here's some rubbish cheese for poor people? <laughs> Confused, so why is why are you on this program? <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? It is like why would you deliberately make the cheese less good than you could make? It's I the bloody Ferrari! Ferrari! It's it's not, this is exactly my point. 
<laughs> they've deliberately made the F430 less good than they know it can be. So they then bring out a more expensive one and put taste the difference on it and sell it in Sainsbury's. Well, they don't actually do that. No, you, know you confuse I mean. yourself, you poor old goat. <laughs> is it? Sorry. Uh, right. it's, I'm moving it on. James has plainly gone quite mad. We're getting back to cars because uh, that's where we're supposed to be. Uh, there's a new uh, mini estate car coming along. They're calling it the Clubman. Uh, it's got five doors, but they're not where you might expect. We've got a picture here. Look, we've got two at the back. When you close those, there's a big line down uh, the centre of the car so you can't see out the rear view mirror. Then you get two on this side and one on the other, and you can tell it's German. How? Because if you pull up in Germany with that, OK, to let your children out of the back, the only back door, they're on the kerb, but they don't switch it round for right-hand drive. So if you pull up in Britain, open the back door to let the children out, they're in the middle of the road. <laughs> so what they're really saying is British children are less important than German children. <laughs> so that is the advertising slogan for that car. Is it? No. <laughs> I think that's a bit like Tesco's own brand bean. There you go. <laughs> yes, mate, you sit in your armchair, love, they'll be round in a bit. Love? Shall we, um, shall we get on? Fifth gear news. Mmm, you know we revealed last week they'd burned our furniture. Well, it turned out that uh, this week, one of their presenters caught fire. <laughs> Jason Potato. Plato. Well, actually, baked potato now. He was belting down the wrong way. <laughs> Brunting thought his car caught fire. He was quite badly injured, actually. He had to go to hospital. He'd burnt his hand and his face and what have you. We, would, uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. But, uh, I'd just like to say thank you, God. <laughs> well, it's a Sunday show. He likes Top Gear more. No, yeah, God's on our side. I think He sent gear. his son along this week. Look, <laughs> Jesus has come. <laughs> has come amongst us. The Son of God does not go to fifth gear. <laughs> he doesn't. That's never been said before. No. Oh, now. I've got a new car from America uh, launched this week. It's called the um, SSC Ultimate Aero. Uh, there it is, 1,183 horsepower, 0 to 62.8 seconds. And this week, it set the fastest um, ever speed um, for a road legal car, 256 miles an hour. Can you believe that? Ooh. They say the body is solely carbon fibre and weighs 131 pounds. If you don't count the doors, the bonnet and the boots. <laughs> That's kind of what I weigh 131 pounds if you don't count my arms, legs and head. It's a fair point. It also says it has a completely flat belly, the only thing in America that has. Yes, um, all right, look, hang on, we mustn't mock the Americans too much, because credit where it's due, they've done it, it is the fastest production car in the world, that's an achievement. I bet this is rubbish. Why? No, I bet it is, because the man who did the speed run in it was 71 years old. Yeah, but that just proves how easy it is to drive if no, a man can... No, no, it shows they w didn't have all that much faith in it. Because, I mean, if you think about it, what did the adverts say? Wanted elderly widower to drive a car we're not very sure about, must have not much else to live for. Oh! That won't be as good as a Bugatti. I'm telling you now, it won't be as good. No, I've got a thing here from a company that makes uh, brake discs and brake pads and things. And they're urging us all to check our brakes, make sure they're working properly, because... According to some statistics from the Department of Transport, one in three accidents happens because a vehicle fails to stop in time. Well, well so I thought it was actually all accidents. Lewis Hamilton. What? Oh. He oh. had an accident because he didn't stop in time. Did you see it last weekend? Did you see it? No. Why weren't you watching? Well, don't have a go, neither was he by the sound of it. He crashed his tyres are poor, lad. No, his tyres had gone. And then it got much worse for him. Actually, we found this on the internet, actually. Uh, stop for petrol on the way home. <laughs> oh, poor lad. Oh, bad day all round, eh? So we get on? Because we've got the most important piece of news ever. Um, I know you probably imagine we go to wild parties all week. We don't. This week, we went on the internet and we found this Porsche design website, OK? Now, it's full of all the stuff you'd expect. They've done briefcases with Porsche written on them, wallets and pens that you can buy for three quid anywhere else because they've got Porsche on them. They're three and a half million pounds each. And it's all full of that complete rubbish. And then we, we went into smoking tools and we <laughs> discovered... <clears throat> for the Porsche enthusiast. Boy, have you got to be an enthusiast. Designed pipe. <laughs> These are real, genuine. They, they cost quite a lot of money, but they come in four different colours and different stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I've spun off in my Porsche. Look at that. Mine won't start properly. No, of course it will. It's a, 
It's a Porsche, persevere. No, what are you doing, man? No, other, other way around you. Ah. It's a 911 Porsche, hot bit goes at the back. <laughs> you don't look right with that, but have you noticed <clears throat> over my shoulder? <laughs> look at him, I've never <laughs> seen. Um, <laughs> with the chair, the pipe. We're building up the perfect picture for you, mate. I think next, next I'll week... I'll tell you something. You see, he's pointing. <laughs> I haven't actually got anything to tell you, but I just wanted to point at you with my pipe, like pipe smoke. And I'll tell you something else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's not gone well. <laughs> they are... <laughs> Jeremy! Hold on! Jeremy! <laughs> what? Who were we? Just get quite clear. What you just did as a grown man was light a pipe and put the wrong end of it in your mouth. <laughs> what are you like on bonfire night? <laughs> you bloody idiot. That isn't the end of the news, but we are ending it there. It's time now to uh, to move on. So and now the news. And this just in from Kira Knightley. She says she's disappointed, but she understands. <laughs> um, anyway, on with road safety news. Some Swiss researchers at a university have found that young men drive faster when they hear masculine words. Some particularly dangerous words they've identified are muscle and beard. What, so they, they drive faster when they hear those words? Yeah, when they hear the word beard. But the interesting thing is, the well, converse... hold on a minute. Are you suggesting that if I see him coming the other way, I will speed up? Yes. It's, it's a beard. <laughs> it is a oh. beard. You will speed up by one mile an hour. But the converse is true, because they slow down again if they hear feminine words such as pink and lipstick. If I hear the word lipstick, I just assume my dogs got excited again. <laughs> I have to say, though, Hammond, this would be brilliant, because, you know, when next time he gives us a lift and we want him to speed up, i.e. always, we just have to sit in the back shouting manly words at him. What? So just shout... Power drill. Work boots. <laughs> <laughs> We could lose him his licence, because wait until he's just coming up to a speed camera, lean over and just whisper, big pliers! <laughs> James May just in a fluster. And then when we wanted to slow down, we just have to use feminine words. Pink. Fluffy. Joking apart, though, I think this is actually quite interesting. If you I've actually said bra, you'd screech to a halt immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that maybe the reason why I always tend to drive a bit too slowly is that I'm always thinking about the John Lewis kitchen department. <laughs> Hey, now, listen, last week we went to uh, Botswana. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you saw it. And the idea of the story was that we were saying you don't need a four-wheel drive car to drive off-road and you'd be amazed how long an old car can be kept going even when you think it's dead. Unfortunately, it became um, really a love story. Um, it was the story, really, of a young man who went out there <laughs> to Africa and he... Hang on a minute. What? Because I think we can improve this with an old Top Gear prop. Hold on. What old Top Gear prop? Just hang on, I'll find it. You well, can... you're an old Top Gear prop, how can you? I <laughs> know oh, that. No, honestly, this will improve it immensely. I'll start again. Would you? Yeah, hang on. Yeah. Wait, wait for it, right. OK. So, it's the story, really, of a young chap... <laughs> ..who went to Africa <laughs> and fell in love with a, with a 43-year-old Opal cadet who he called Oliver. <laughs> and they would sit for many hours under the stars telling each other they had eyes like pools of moonlight. And now he's decided to ship him back... I've said Hang him. On. Eat. Ship eat back to England, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I have. He's coming home. Are you going to live in the country together and, you know, like embroider church kneelers? Are you sure this isn't just, you know, the typical holiday romance? You'll get him home. <laughs> <laughs> when you were out there, you thought you had a lovely moustache. You'll get him home and he'll be horrid. Richard, he only wants a British passport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or an MOT. Listen, it's real. He loves me and he's coming home. That's a fact. It just is out. I'm Don't... going to be sick. <laughs> Look at him there, he is, the face. <laughs> Missing him, he's on a boat right now as we speak. I know. No, you're not offloading. Bristol. <laughs> mm. I don't know when. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move it on, shall we? <laughs> Go on. Um, yes, now you may remember the first programme of this series when we went uh, uh, over to Europe and drove all around the place trying to find fab fabulous driving roads in those lightweight supercars. Mm. Mm. Um, well, we heard from a chap who did the same 
I mean, we'd said, look, do it, it's brilliant. Well, a chap did, and he sent us his holiday photographs. He sent us a photograph here of him on the first day of his trip at the Stelvio Pass, where we actually were, with his Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. And he also then sent us a photograph of how it ended up on his holiday. Here it is. Mm. Not, not, not... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the thoughts he's having about Top Gear now. Uh, <laughs> not generous. Not good. Now, the, uh, the police in Hampshire uh, are running an advert of a jolly policeman in his tall helmet, and they're putting it on the back of a bus. We've got it here. There you are. It's fine, except for where the bus's exhaust pipe is. <laughs> oh, 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 there's his... No, that... <laughs> oh, that poor man. Imagine driving behind that. Look, look. There's me, there's my small metal penis. <laughs> <laughs> he will be the crossest policeman in the world. If you get pulled by him, it's bad news. It is. I mean, if you do get pulled by him for speeding, don't whatever you do say, aren't you the one for the exhaust pipe for a penis? <laughs> Hey, now, listen, you know you two, OK? You know London well enough. Yeah. Name for me what you think is the traditional London minicab. Minicab. What car? Mm. Uh, Toyota Miss, Camry. Nissan Primera. Yeah. Hyundai Sonata. No, yeah, you're wrong. You're, oh, God, where are my glasses? Not again. <laughs> Here we go. Somebody has compiled, OK, a list of minicabs uh, registered in London. I've got them here, OK? 17 of them are Bentley Continental GTs. Three are Maybachs, the big ones, the 62s, and there are eight two-seater Merc SLs. Mini Do you want to know why? Yes. Because if you register your car as a minicab, you don't have to pay the congestion charge. But, yeah, but hang on. How much does it cost to register your car as a minicab? Well, OK, congestion charge, eight quid a day, yeah. and that's going up, but it's eight quid a day now, so that's 40 quid a week. It costs uh, £27 a year to register... As a minicab, and, and, and with a one-off application uh, fee of £82. But, hang on, you don't actually have, actually have to use your car as a minicab. Well, I mean, if they're going to come round, they're going to say, are you a minicab driver? Oh, yeah, well, we're going to test you. Do you know where you're going? No. Well, where you are, then. <laughs> Do you have to have, like, a pool of sick and a beaded seat cover in the car to <laughs> qualify as a minicab? I hope not, because uh, first thing tomorrow morning, they're getting uh, an application for a Lamborghini Gallardo Spider <laughs> minicab. <laughs> I look forward to falling out Isn't of a kebab that... shop and vomiting in it. That's <laughs> what I was going to say. No, I vomited in it just now, so it's very appropriate. <laughs> um, briefly, to talk about... Oh, yes, car. yeah, no, this is a good one now. Mitsubishi, you know Mitsubishi, makers of the Evo and all that, they've mm -hmm. now introduced a new turbocharged mid-engine car. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Yeah. There it is. It's called the iCar. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. No, because, OK, it, it might be ugly, but at least it's slow. <laughs> 64 brake horsepower. But it's got some clever bits and pieces. They say it's got a, a special filter on the air conditioning that, and, and I quote, they say, is of major benefit to allergy sufferers. I'm allergic to Bill Oddy. Will it stop him getting in? <laughs> Bill Oddy cannot be blown through the air vents at you. The filter gets rid of it. Like it? No, it's very clear. It's, got, it's also got hypoallergenic seats in What, it. they give you eczema? No. Chlamydia? No, they... <laughs> no, they, they, they stop your eczema. And it's got a deodorising roof lining up there. No, I, I, I know about that. No, I was reading about that the other day. If you um, break wind... For instance. ..in that car... Yes. ..the smells are absorbed into the roof lining. It's a well, trick. It's, de it's deodorising, that's what it does. So, basically, the seats absorb your eczema and the roof lining absorbs your farts, which, <laughs> which is very clever. But you wouldn't want to buy one second-hand, would you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, it's now time to move on. And for me to, uh, to drive a car, it's called the Caparo T1, and it's possibly the most amazing, maybe the fastest, and almost certainly the scariest car ever made. And now, the news. Now, you know those club card points that you get in supermarkets when you spend money? Mm. Tesco's has announced this week that if you spend those vouchers on a car, you get four times the value of the points. Really? They quadruple them. Well, that's quite good, cos I buy my pies from Tesco's. Oh. You know, those little steak ones with the gravy from the finest range with the really thick, crusty topping. Well, it, it works. That for every £100 you spend, you get the equivalent of £4 back in points towards your car. So how many pies a week do you eat? Two. And how much are they? One pound twenty. One pound twenty. So for each one of those one pound twenties, you get... So you could be on your way to a car, mate. Let's just work this one out. You could have enough for a Ford Fiesta diesel in 2,403 years. Wow! <laughs>
You're going to have to eat more pies. That's what you'll have to do. A lot more. I can eat more pies than that. Hang on, I can work out that... Um, hold on a minute. Well, it's an ambition for you. No, hang on a minute, because I could have a new Ford Focus in a year if I eat 570 pies a day. Well, well there you go! <laughs> So in a year's time, James, James, your new car's here. I can't get up. <laughs> I don't feel so well. Pies are not a good way to buy cars, just in case you were wondering. Now, you ready for this? The Americans have announced their green car of the year. Oh, good, it'll be a Toyota Prius. So it isn't. Move. Is Electric it? thing? It's nope. a Prius Toyota. No. Nope. It's going to be a Prius, so... It isn't. I've got a photograph of it here. There you go. That's not a Prius. No, that's Whoa. a six-litre V8 Chevy Tahoe. <laughs> That's a green car I'm of the year. absolutely not joking. Uh, no, it's a hybrid. They put a tiny, weeny little electric motor in it somewhere. There you are, that's a hybrid. And they've fallen for it. Does 21 miles to the gallon. That's green. It is very green. Actually, the funniest thing is the judges for this, OK? Do you want to know who the judges are? The American green car of the year. One of them was um, Jay Leno. Oh, he hates cars. Yes, oh, apart yeah. from his large collection of Ferraris mm. and Porsches, he hates them. Yeah. Uh, Carol Shelby. Oh, he really hates them. <laughs> <cars. laughs> yeah. No, Carol Shelby was the man who put the seven-liter uh, V8 in the ACH to create the Cobra and spends his time now... Supercharging Mustangs. He does, yes. He puts superchargers on Mustangs. And the other judge was... Um, he's called Jean-Michel Cousteau, and he's actually Jacques Cousteau's son. Is he? I'd love to have been in the past, you know, when they were discussing it. <laughs> Shut up, you goddamn Frenchy, cheese-eating surrender monkey. Poor bloke, when he walked in that room, it's yeah. going to be very exciting. I'm a judge, and they were there drinking petrol and supercharging their chair. <laughs> to Shelby would be going, I don't know what a hybrid is, it's like country and western. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, now you've got one. You know the Ford car? Yeah. It's been around for 11 years. Has it? Yes. Oh, really? 11 years old? It has, and they've decided to mark that anniversary with a special, special limited edition. And here it is. It's, uh, it's called the two-tone, and obviously it is two-tone. You can have that's blazer blue, or you can have panther black, teamed with moonstone silver bu bumpers there. Oh. It's, it's really... But I think I know where they got that idea from. It's actually an earlier Ford. Here it is. There, you see? <laughs> that's what they... <laughs> No, because that's... that's uh, no, because the bodywork is Dagenham Hospital white, and then that's burnt Frisia door there, and this back door, I think, is from the Autumn Mist collection. <laughs> that's an exciting special edition. Now, there's a survey from Toyota out this week, OK? And they say 72% of Europeans rate health and well-being as being important in a car. Well, now, that means what they're saying is 28% of Europeans like a car to make them feel ill. That doesn't seem... Oh, I love my Mondeo, because every time I start the engine, it gives me scurvy, and that's a good thing in my life. <laughs> I chose Porsche, because it brings on rectal prolapse. And I like it. <laughs> anyway, Toyota have come up with a car, OK? They're calling it a healthy living car, and it's designed to make you feel good. Really? And here it is. Oh, God. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't feel good in that. I'd feel like a prat. So, uh, to so be honest. What do you do? Pedal it? No, no, no. It's got a normal engine, but they say, OK, the steering wheel changes colour depending on what mood you're in. What? So if you get angry, it goes red. How does the steering wheel know when you're angry? No, why do you want the steering wheel to tell you you're angry? You already know that, cos you're frothing you across. across. <laughs> but it's quite a quite thing. You know when you say to women, what's wrong? And they go, nothing. <laughs> well, there is, cos you're steering wheel. <laughs> Now, uh, this here is the Honda FCX Clarity, all right? Now, this has, ready, collision mitigation braking. Brakes. So, yes. They, they call it. <laughs> you actually analyse what collision mitigating, uh, mitigating braking system means. It doesn't mean brakes. However, this is one of the most important cars ever launched. It's actually got a hydrogen fuel cell, so the only thing that comes out of the back of that... The, all that comes out is water, H2O, that's it. It's completely zero emissions, I, I'm really astonishing. The hydrogen fuel cells are actually extremely clever, much better than batteries, because mm. the, uh, the fuel cell stack in that develops 100 kilowatts. No, it is, and that's, well, that would be enough well, like for your house. Yeah, well, it would be 100 electric fires, but in my house, I mean, even if you put lots of stuff on, like the immersion heater, the cooker, the telly, 
the central heating. Your electric the, curlers. Mele yeah, my electric curlers. A gramophone. And the giant flashing illuminated neon picture of Freddie Mercury. Yes. All of that. On. Um, so that, that would add up to what? Well, no more than ten. No, is that, and the point of this car is that not only is it a proper car, drives around like a normal car, but if you could plug that into your house, well, it would actually power a whole street. Easily. And yeah. only produce water. The only real problem is that, we, well, the only thing that we haven't got yet is a hydrogen filling station. And the other thing, of course, is that hy storing hydrogen is tricky, but they're working yeah. on ways to make it so you can store it on bits of metal. And actually, that brings me on to something. Children, if you're watching, um, school tomorrow, if you've got a science lesson and the teacher says, today we're going to do storage of hydrogen, pay attention, because whoever works that out is going to be the richest person the world has ever seen. Ever. Because, honestly, when, as soon as they get the infrastructure worked out, that's just it. Yep. So if you're watching this in Saudi Arabia... <laughs> <laughs> Time to break out your camel. <laughs> it's back to carpets for you. <laughs>